Welcome to 101. I'm Greg Bassett, your host from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper. We're continuing election interviews today, and we've got Michelle Gregory from District 4. Welcome, Michelle. Hello. Thanks for having me. So you're running for city council. Yes, I am. Uh, I decided to run when I found out that um, Jim would not be running this time. Jim uh, Ireton, our former mayor who's a councilman, has decided not to run for re-election. Yep. Um, so um, as the former chair of the Central Committee for the Democratic Party in Wicomico County. I went on a search for people to run and was unsuccessful and decided to step up myself. Now you're a prominent Democrat certainly, but these are nonpartisan elections in our city government. Correct, correct. Um, so the obligatory question, why do you want to be on the city council? So um, I think our city has made great improvements in the recent years and I don't want to see us slide back to where we were, where there was um, petty infighting and I think we can still go, uh, we still have a ways to go. So I decided to get into the race to make sure that we continue on that path. Now your district is uh, Newtown, which yes. is certainly famous in that Johnson Lake area, kind yes. of the north part of Salisbury. Mm -hmm. What's unique about your district? Um, it is mostly historic um, and there are a lot of concerns from, from people in that area um, that we maintain the charm and, and the, um, the general air of the community. Um, it's been growing by leaps and bounds um, and they want to make sure that we keep it as family oriented as possible. Now you mentioned uh, certainly um, Jim Ireton, your predecessor, mm -hmm. um, perhaps um, very big on neighborhood issues. Yes, very much so. Um, so one of the things I want to continue doing is making sure um, that we continue having great interaction with the neighborhood. Um, our uh, city has great a great program for going out and having community events and that sort of thing in different neighborhoods and I want to make sure we continue that and he is, the mayor has started this uh, office hours where you can go have coffee with him and I would like to continue that and, and expand that to the council members and have that uh, something that we we focus on as well. Com Communicating with the with the neighborhoods is is key to you know making sure we move forward. One of the criticisms about the mayor from time to time is that he's too focused on downtown and not focused enough on the mm -hmm. neighborhoods. Do you see it that way? Um, I can understand where people get that idea, but I really feel that he has um, used all of his platforms available to him, whether it's social media or whatever. I've, I've never seen a, an elected official more responsive to people online. So I think that's something that um, we should be very happy about. Um, but yeah, there's always there's always room for improvement. We can always do more. Right. Um, our crime numbers, if you look at them, are really significantly improved mm -hmm. in the last decade. Yes. Uh, you could argue it's the safest it's ever been. Mm -hmm. But there's still a perception of a crime issue, uh, especially in the neighborhoods, where people right. don't feel safe. Right, and, uh, and I understand that. Um, I think it, it's one of those things that um, people got used to that being the way it was, and so they assume it's that way now. And I think um, having um, more interaction with our police out in the neighborhoods and that sort of thing um, would go a long way to, to fixing that perception. Um, I, I think it's just a matter of time before people understand that it is it has greatly improved. As a reporter when I'm at the meetings um, I kind of now and then when they're talking about stuff I try to imagine if I was a council member how it would maybe do something different. Do you have that same sort of thing? Do you watch the meetings and go, no, they should be talking about this or going in this direction? Um, sometimes. I mean, I, I, I watch the, I don't, oft, I haven't gone to the meetings. I just usually watch them online. Um, sometimes, um, but like I said, I, I feel like our, our city has gone in, in the right direction is for the most part. So generally speaking, I, I do agree with decisions they make. 
Um, but uh, again, you know, there's there's always room for more perspective. Do you have a platform? Is there any single thing or two or three things you'd like to accomplish? So uh, for me, the big the big thing that I've heard from everybody that I've spoken to, um, one of the main topics is affordable housing, making sure that yes, we've got all this enormous growth downtown, but we need to make sure that there are families that are able to afford. Like we've got this, um, the, the new uh, building, the, the new high rise that's going downtown. Um, and that's great and that's wonderful for and it's going to be mostly for students and that's fantastic but we need to make sure we're making affordable housing units for families in this area because it is rather expensive right now to, to even just rent so and finding and finding affordable housing is very difficult other issues you want to key on? Another issue that I would like to do uh, uh, to cover is going back to the neighborhoods is making sure we're in the neighborhoods, making sure we're having community meetings, that the, the, the uh, people on the council are interacting with their community and discussing the issues of the day um, and their concerns and, and what they like, what they don't like. Um, and also it will do a long way, go a long way to making sure that the messages um, and the truth about these messages get out to the public. Face-to-face -face meeting is much more important than anything like social media or regular media. Um, talk about maybe uh, police force is understaffed, needs more money, any thoughts on that? Um, so I believe our, our city police, um, from what I've seen and heard, that the, the pay is, is substantial once they, and, and I think that's a large part of the, to the efforts of the mayor and the council in the recent years, making sure that they're paid adequately. Um, it is an extremely important and dif difficult job. So I wanna make sure that we continue doing that, making sure that they're continued to, to be paid what they're worth. A kind of a controversy on the council right now, the idea um, of forming um, a city alcohol control board. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you feel about that? Um, I think it, I, I, I would support it. I mean, I think that's something that, that we could definitely look into. Um, you know, I'm not sure all the minutia, minutia or de details that would be necessary, but I mean, I could absolutely support something like that. Um, I would like us to start s having a better relationship with the county. Um, I'm not sure how much that's possible right now um, with the current politics of this situation, but um, especially recent going ons, but I think that that's something that we can work towards. What, what do you think is the seed in that? The, if this, these groups have not gotten along ever. Um, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's um, I think it, part of it might just be personalities. Um, I think part of it is politics, um, but we need we need to move forward. We need to we need to be grown ups and learn that we ha all have to work together. So I think that's something that we could definitely work on. One of the things I get a lot of calls about are these um, movements to sort of slow traffic down in the city, the mm -hmm. bike lanes, the work right. that's been done in the right, park. Right. Newtown was the first to do that, mm -hmm. uh, where they did sort of that suppression thing, because mm -hmm. people would cut through that neighborhood right. uh, on Isabella Street rather than use Route 50. Right. Um, it seems like it's been successful in Newtown. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about it for the whole city? I think it's great. I mean, the more we, we, we um, make it easier for people to ride bikes and use more environmentally friendly ways of transportation, um, it, it would be fantastic. I think uh, the bike lanes, are absolutely something that we need in the city. Um, it's not something that has ever been done around here that I've seen. And um, I think that the, the general idea of it is good. I think it's just gonna take, again, like anything, people are resistant to change. So I think after a while, people will understand and, and, and we'll start to come around to it. The rentals issue in town, we don't hear about that as much mm -hmm. as we did for a long time. Um, how do you think rentals are going in Salisbury? So I know personally in my own neighborhood, um, I've seen houses that are put up for sale and are quickly snapped up by property managers and turned into rentals. Um, to me, I would like to see if that is the case, if the, uh, that those properties are kept at a reasonable rate. Um, but rent in this city is kind of outrageous um, 
for what you pay in rent, you could almost buy a home um, or definitely buy a home. So uh, I think making sure that we have affordable rentals for families out there in the city who don't make as much as, you know, say a, 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 a more wealthy family would, I think we should absolutely look at, look at making sure that we have affordable rentals. Another kind of complaint concern that people hit me with is um, the rising water and sewer rates. Mm -hmm. uh, cities kept its tax rate flat, but seems to have to raise water and sewer rates all the time. Any thoughts about that? Um, so I, as someone who lives in the city, I've certainly been hit by it um, and it's caught me off guard. Um, I would say, uh, yes, uh, you know, it, it can be, there can be quite a sticker shock when the rates go up. Um, however, we do have a new water treatment plant um, and the waterways of this area are absolutely in need of protection. So we need to make sure that we're, we're funding that fully. So you talk about affordable housing. What can really be done? What would you recommend to be done about this to make more affordable housing? So there are um, options out there for us to take uh, advantage of on the federal level through HUD. Um, there's a program called the Family uh, Self-Sufficiency Program. Um, it's been done in other towns around the Eastern Shore. And what it would do is help families who are currently on Section 8 housing save and put money towards uh, buying their first home. It would, it, it is a five-year program that we could start as a pilot and uh, it would help families save their money rather than it going towards rent, it would be credited towards an account that they, that they would have control over, but um, the city would set up for them. And they would have a counselor of sorts to walk them through the process over the course of five years and it would help them with things like educate, getting more education, uh, better work, better, uh, better pay, that sort of thing. And all around, it, I think it would do a lot of good for a lot of families in our area. So the election is November 5th, and where's the polling place for District 4? Wicomico Presbyterian Church on Broad Street. It's 129 Broad Street in Salisbury, and uh, the election is November 5th, first Tuesday of the month. Good. She's Michelle Gregory. She's running for City Council, District 4, and we're thrilled that she was here today. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much for having me. I'm Greg Bassett from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper, another edition of One on One, right here on Pack 14. First Shore Federal is proud to support PAC-14 and one-on-one. -on -one. We'd encourage every business to support PAC-14 and, and pick a program and support it and let's make a difference.